TUC in Liverpool, RMT maintained a high profile from start to finish in pursuit of our key objectives. On the Sunday prior to the opening of the conference, RMT supported a march from the Pierhead to the Echo Arena, organised by Liverpool TUC, calling for a fight back from the trade union movement in response to the attacks on jobs and services that are gaining momentum across the UK. A small group of fascists, heavily corralled by the police, turned out at the start of the march to grab their snappy snaps to stick up online on their hate sites. They were met with a barrage of traditional Scouse ridicule. <laughs> RMT General Secretary Bob Crow addressed the marches. Well, brothers and sisters and comrades, uh, it's a great pleasure being here amongst working people who want to have a go. And let's hope those people in this Congress Centre next week when the Congress opens tomorrow wants to start waking up and recognise the fact that unless this trade union movement starts standing up and fighting for working people, then they're going to become completely irrelevant. They won't be meeting in that Congress Centre next time they come to Liverpool. There'll be enough room in a telephone box if they keep on having policies that don't fight and achieve what working people want. On the Monday, bright and early, RMT invited the Hillsborough Justice Campaign to join us in a lobby of delegates to draw their ongoing campaign on behalf of the 96 who died in the disaster 20 years ago to the attention of Congress. What do you think is the importance of bringing uh, this campaign message to TUC? Well, the, the word solidarity to me represents trade unionism and we need the solidarity of the people of Liverpool and the people of the United Kingdom to help us get justice for, our, for the victims of the 1989 disaster. The RMT's Justice for Hillsborough Don't Buy the Sun t-shirts went down a storm with delegates. 70% of the people of Britain demand that Festus be taken into public ownership. To support the RMT's demand, support the British people that demand that our people are released from prison. Everybody does need to stand together and it, it frightens employees, the power that workers have when they do stand together. On the Tuesday, we turn the spotlight on the ongoing campaign to save the Vestas wind turbines factory on the Isle of Wight with a fringe meeting, hearing from one of the RMT factory occupiers, Mike Godley. We do need to put pressure on the government and we do need to let them know that they need to follow up on what they promised. It's, it's empty promises all the time, so they need to back up what they're saying, basically. And by letting a wind turbine factory close, um, it's, it's devastating, so I hope you lost support us. And it's our duty as a trade union movement this week to say whatever people are out there fighting for jobs or occupations, then we should be proud that we support those people. If it means food parcels, if it means water, if it means giving practical experience about what people have achieved in Dublin and Isle of Wight, it's our duty as a trade union movement to stand with them, not sit on the sidelines and say it's someone else's problem. It's all our problems as working people and it's been a privilege that I've been involved in this dispute. Thank you very much. Come Wednesday, and we took the Vestas campaign onto the floor of conference during Climate Secretary Ed Meliband's speech. Our Vestas members received the longest standing ovation of the week. Later on the Wednesday, we played a full role in the transport debate and the call for renationalisation of the railways. Out on the fringe, we raised the crucial issue of support for the Irish No campaign in the referendum on the Lisbon Treaty. And it was a real pleasure to be able to bring Paddy Hill from the Birmingham Six and Gerard Conlon from the Guildford Four to talk about their campaign for a trauma centre for victims of miscarriages of justice. We've got with us two men. The link with Paddy and Gerard had been forged two years ago at the left field at Glastonbury. What's your story? Well, in 1974, I got arrested, spent 15 years in jail. My father came over to get me a lawyer, ended up dying in jail. My case was up, my conviction was overturned in 89. And since then, I've been campaigning and trying to help innocent people who are in prison. You know, I think we came out and we got a bit of a platform. And there's no good having a platform if you're not going to go up and stand and speak out and tell people what's happened to you. And it's not a revenge thing. It's a justice thing, you know. It's sort of truth and justice, because no justice is no peace. Most of the RMT's official conference business had been shifted back to the last day, Thursday, but it was worth the wait as our motions on the People's Charter and young members sailed through the Congress. Thank you.